You're listening to The Heart of You on Paris Underground Radio. For more great content, please join us on Patreon. Hello and welcome back to The Heart of You. My name is Annette Delu, and in today's episode, the finale of season three, I am going to be talking about ancestral line clearing. Now, I want you to stay tuned to the very end of the episode because I'm going to do a short meditation to allow you to connect to your ancestors and to any particular clearing that might need to happen within your ancestral line. So you might be wondering why we need to clear things that are in our ancestral line. Well, let's start first by talking about why you may have incarnated into your particular ancestral line. If you are somebody who identifies as a light worker, then it is most likely the case where you have chosen a particular ancestral line because you are meant to transmute whatever trauma, whatever curses or vows or anything that has happened throughout the course of the last several generations in order to do the work to clear this ancestral line. So many of us choose particular parents because of who they are and who their ancestors were. So for example, if you had some particular trauma in your paternal family line and there was some sort of belief system in regards to who men are and what they are supposed to be, Let's say you have a lot of military men in your ancestral history. That could be simply because it was a belief system that all men were meant to serve their country or that you were meant to die for your country. And in fact, that is not the case. And that is not something that the divine asks us to do. It is simply something that has been handed down from generation to generation. So how do you break that belief system? Well, you have to have somebody who incarnates into the ancestral line who is able to either break that belief system or to energetically clear what needs to be cleared from that ancestral line. So that's where you come in. So as a light worker, you will oftentimes incarnate in order to clear those things within the ancestral line. Your life may look much different than, let's say, your father's or your grandfather's or moving all the way back through the generations. And that is by design, because you incarnated into this family in order to break the traditions, in order to make sure that you are not making the same decisions and continuing those same ancestral ties. So let's back up for a moment. You have now decided to incarnate into a particular family. You know that your particular light worker job or your mission in that particular family line is to break some sort of pattern. So how do you figure out what that pattern is? The simplest way is to get an Akashic Record session, which is something that I do on a regular basis with my clients is to clear those ancestral lines. But you can also try to discover this for yourself. So you can go into a meditation, which, as I mentioned, I will give you a meditation at the end of this episode, and you can really go into that that deep place of understanding where your ancestors really started in whatever trauma or whatever belief system you're trying to clear. The process in which I do this clearing in the Akashic Records starts with understanding how many generations back this particular trauma or this particular belief system starts. So if we're going to use that example again of the military, so let's say there are many men who really felt in your family that they needed to die for their country or serve their country in some way, we can go back and ask your angels and guides, okay, so how far back is this? 
So they might say it's seven generations ago or 20 generations ago. The one thing that's really interesting about this type of clearing, and it's it's always something that I want to mention because you don't always have to get an Akashic session in order to clear things because we're constantly clearing things as we go along our process. So in order to clear these things, it is something that we naturally do, but it just takes a lot longer. So being able to access the Akashic records or being able to access your intuition in regards to this subject matter allows you to sort of speed up that process and get things done a lot quicker. Oftentimes you won't find these sort of generational belief systems or traumas going back much further than, let's say, seven to nine generations. They do, in fact, occasionally go back many more generations, maybe 17, maybe 20. But a lot of times the reason for that is because there is some maybe really big trauma that has happened, or there might be an ancestral line curse that has happened, in which case it's pretty stubborn. And those things are actually a bit more difficult to clear out. So they do take a little bit longer in terms of various different generations and lifetimes. In order to really identify those particular traumas, those particular patterns, you have to go back to its origin point. And that's where it can get tricky if you do not have access to the Akashic Records. You can still get some of this information, but it will be hard if you're not actually in the records. So basically to get to that origin point, you're going to go back to that first generation that had the trauma. So let's say, for example, the first person in that ancestral line who decided they needed to be in the military, it was something that was actually imposed upon them by either the government or society or whoever it happens to be. So when you first take a look at that, that initial generation that had this belief system, it wasn't even something that was their own free will choice. It may have been something that was imposed upon them. And oftentimes that is the case. So if it is imposed upon them, then that belief system and that trauma is being basically passed on from generation to generation, when in fact it was never even chosen to begin with. So then once you figure out, okay, so that was the first generation that was forced to be in the military, but then it was kind of spun from generation to generation that even though it was forced upon them, that this is something that is completely honorable, that this is something that every man should do, because that is the definition of what masculinity looks like, when in fact that is completely untrue. Divine masculinity has nothing to do with war. It has nothing to do with killing and it has nothing to do with brute force. When you take a look at all of these things that get instilled upon generation after generation, you can see where things just get completely distorted. This is one of the most important reasons why we have to untangle these generational belief systems and all of these traumas is to be able to move forward in brand new energy that does not include behaviors that are rooted in something that is not even true and that was not chosen with free will. Another reason why this is important work to do is because this is how we start to unravel the energy of toxic masculinity. This is how we start unraveling the energy of groups of people being repressed, groups of people being treated differently than every other human. This is how we start getting to the root cause of things like hatred and racism. This is how we unravel all of these things that have happened in the past from an energetic standpoint. And you may ask how we can do that when things in the past have already happened. Well, you know, I talk about this quite often about the fact that especially when you are looking at ancestral trauma, when you are looking at past lives and in the Akashic records, all time is happening simultaneously. There is no past. There is no future. Everything is happening all at once. 
And so if you are able to change what has passed, what we would consider to be the past, if you can change it right now, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you make the decision to change and shift that energy so it is a more positive energy, so it is a more nurturing energy, a more inclusive energy? So imagine if every single person on this planet decided to do this energetic work. They decided to go into their Akashic records or have somebody go into their Akashic records for them and clear this ancestral line baggage, whatever it happens to be. Can you imagine the difference it would make in the world? If you think that just clearing your ancestral line, which would be sort of your side of the street, is just one small part and how much difference could it make? It could make the world of difference. It can make the world of difference in order to shift energy for the collective. So the one thing that is always a really beautiful thing to realize is when you are working with belief systems, understanding their origins and understanding whether or not they are true, they are true for you, they are true for society, they were even true to begin with. Because some belief systems were true at a time, at a particular time but maybe they're not true anymore. So as things evolve, so do belief systems. And so when you start getting into this work of clearing ancestral lines, non-judgment is a really good place to be because our ancestors may have done things that were horrible things that we would consider to be absolutely horrendous things. We have to look at it from a place of compassion, understanding that those were the choices that they made at that time. And to be able to have compassion and allow those things to be cleared, because the more judgment and the more hatred and the more, let's say, negative energies that we sort of place upon our ancestors and what they did, the more those things are going to perpetuate. So the more hatred is going to perpetuate, the more division is going to perpetuate. So in order to create more inclusiveness, to create more beautiful, unconditional love. We really need to embrace the flaws and understand the growth that needed to happen throughout the course of history. Understand that the other aspect of clearing your ancestral line can also affect you personally and physically. When somebody has an ancestral line that has a lot of physical ailments, Those things have been handed down from generation to generation energetically. Yes, of course, DNA has a part in all of this, but energy is the signature. It is the way in which it gets handed down. There is a reason why you will see generation after generation have the same health problem. If you would be able to basically stop that in its tracks, wouldn't you want to do that? going in and finding the origin point of that particular ailment. So it's not necessarily a straight line. So you may have a history of cancer in your family, but maybe it didn't originate with just uh, one person having cancer and then that sort of energy being handed down from one generation to the next. That cancer might be as a result of that particular ancestor holding on to some deep, deep trauma that happened to that person. And that trauma is being handed down from each person to generation to generation. The trauma could have been maybe one of your ancestors was raped. Maybe they were abused. There are all kinds of different traumas that could have happened that would have created or planted this little seed of trauma, of whatever the the physical ailment is. And how the physical ailment actually manifests would be different in each person along the ancestral line. So it really depends on where that person's, let's say, weak point happens to be. So if there is a soul that is working on unconditional love or working on forgiveness or something else, then maybe that particular trauma will affect the heart. Or if you are working on purging grief, then maybe that particular ailment would affect the lungs or something to that effect. So obviously each emotion has a particular connection or relation 
to each organ in the body or to each place in the body, whether it is an energy center, one of your chakras, it can be connected to based on whatever it is you happen to be working on. Are you looking for a new book to read? Because I know I always am. Head to Storytime in Paris on Paris Underground Radio with your host, Jennifer Garrity, as she interviews fascinating authors that have a French connection. We will be right back with The Heart of You after a word from our sponsors. Welcome back to The Heart of You on Paris Underground Radio. Now, our higher selves and our souls are working constantly on this type of thing. So without our knowledge, they are constantly going to work and helping us to clear all of these things in the ancestral lines. There are times when there are blockages. There are things that cannot be cleared or things that are really difficult to clear. And in which case, our soul will actually make decisions to sort of block those things further in order to not have it affect the next generation. So in a lot of my sessions, I've actually come across this very thing where there is a grandmother or a great grandparent that has blocked the information from the Akashic records. So ultimately what happens is I go back into that particular generation and I will ask that ancestor if they can unlock or unblock the information so we can move forward and clear the information and clear the trauma, clear whatever it is that needs to be cleared. There are times when they don't allow me to do that, where they will literally say, absolutely not. You are not going to see what happened. You are not going to touch this because it cannot be seen. And in which case, there are ways in which we can still clear some of the residual energy, but until that ancestor or until that that soul is allowing that to be released, there's not a lot that we can do. So there are times when we can't go much further than you know we are in the actual Akashic Record session. So when it comes down to it, it does depend on all of the various souls that are involved all of the people in the ancestral line, and if they are in agreement to clearing the things that need to be cleared. Sometimes it can be just sheer horror or shame or guilt that the ancestor doesn't want you to see what they did or what happened. There are often times when I can actually speak to the ancestor and sort of have a conversation with them, let them know that it is okay for us to have this information, that there is no judgment, there is no punishment in regards to what happened. And a lot of times I can sort of talk them off the ledge, so to speak, allow them to open up the information and release that energy. Because here's what happens. If an ancestor, if their soul decides to block some of the information because of shame or guilt, or maybe because they're trying to protect the future generations, it's like a dam. So imagine a dam that is holding back an enormous ocean. The ocean is eventually going to break through, right? It's not like it's holding back a, a small river or a stream. It's holding back an ocean. And that's that divine source energy that just always needs to be in the flow. And so if it is trying to hold it back, eventually that energy will break through or it'll seep through in certain ways. So you might find that even if an ancestor blocked a particular trauma or a curse or anything like that, then, you know, that energy might still be seeping through and affecting your life. And that's the other thing. So it's not just about clearing for the collective. It's not just about clearing for maybe your parents or your grandparents, but it's also clearing for yourself because all of these ancestral traumas, belief systems, curses, all of these things get handed down to you. And then they end up affecting your personal experience in this lifetime. So in order to make sure that you are, let's say, operating from a clean slate, that you don't have any other energies operating within you and around you based on previous generations, 
it is always good to make sure that you are doing the work that you need to do to clear everything that does not serve you, that does not belong in your energetic field. A lot of times this does mean disconnecting from our relations. So that doesn't necessarily mean disconnecting, meaning that you don't have relationships with them. It means disconnecting from them energetically for a particular period of time. So let's say your parents or your grandparents still hold some of those toxic belief systems from your ancestors, then you will need to sort of distance yourself from those belief systems in order to start changing them. Eventually, you might be able to get your parents and your grandparents and other people in your family to be able to transmute this energy and to start changing the outward behavior in regards to their own lives. But the work always starts energetically first. The energetics of it need to change because if you decide to go to a parent and say, well, hey, look, this belief system has been in our family for years and it no longer serves us, it doesn't make any sense for us anymore. If you're not clearing it energetically first, it will still always pop up over and over and over again. We've had discussions on this podcast about being in therapy, which I'm a huge fan of therapy. But if you're only looking at the outward symptoms, or if you're only looking at the human symptoms, so meaning the emotions or anything like that in regards to a particular trauma, and you're not clearing the energetic signature or the energetic imprint of that particular trauma or of that particular belief, it's going to continue to pop up over and over and over again until you address it. So be patient with your parents, with your grandparents, with your family. Be patient with everybody in your ancestral line because this type of work does take time. You can clear the energetic signature of these traumas, of these ancestral traumas very quickly. It is the work that happens after the fact that does take a little bit of time. So as you start realizing the things that need to be cleared, that's when the actual physical work starts. So we're going to get started on this little meditation that I'm going to give you as my gift to you for the end of season three, which is to connect to your ancestors, connect to your ancestral line, and to be able to ask them any questions, to be able to get just little bits of information that you might need in order to move forward, in order to clear some ancestral line traumas, So I would like you to start off as we always do with three deep breaths. So inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. So inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. I would like you to imagine that you are in a field surrounded by grass and flowers. And surrounding you are a circle of trees offering up that beautiful divine Gaia protection. And now I'd like you to imagine that right in front of you, there is a door. I would like you to open this door and walk inside. This is your sacred space. This is the place where your Akashic records are held. And I would like you to look to your right. That is your entire angelic team standing right there, waiting for you to ask them for help in any situation you might need help with. 
And I would like you to ask your angels and guides of the highest divine light to help you with this task of connecting to your ancestral line. And I will pause while you do that. And maybe you can have a short conversation with any of your angels or guides who would like to come forward and give you any messages that you might need. If you need to pause the podcast right now in order to get a lengthier message from your guides, feel free to do so now. Okay, so I would like you to turn to your left. And there is a very large space, sort of an empty space. And I would like you to imagine the first part of the ancestral line that needs to be addressed. And you will either hear or maybe you will see or feel somebody pop into that open space and just acknowledge that to be the truth. So if you hear mother or if you see a female figure step forward or you feel that it is a female energy or maybe you're feeling that it's a masculine energy that it is a paternal side Whatever it happens to be, it's that first instinct that comes to you. It's going to be the right one. And it could be both. But we're going to focus on just one side for the time being. And that is the particular side of your ancestral line that we are going to be focusing on at this moment. I would like you to step forward and have a conversation with this person who is in your ancestral line. I would like you to ask them how far back, how many generations back do you need to look into this ancestral line, trauma, belief system, curse, whatever it happens to be. That first number that they tell you or that pops into your head that you hear or feel That is the exact right number. Again, if you need more time, you can always pause the podcast in order to get more messages if you are getting them. Once you get the number of generations back, you need to look. I would like you then to ask this ancestor what it is that you need to clear. You can ask if it's a curse, if it's a belief system, if it's a trauma, if it is something that the ancestor did that they were shameful of, whatever it happens to be, you can ask and just listen, feel into what the answer is. And then you can ask them if they are willing to tell you what the actual situation was for that particular ancestor. If they are willing to tell you, allow them to give you the entire story. Maybe you will see it like you would see a movie. Maybe you will hear it. And once you are finished hearing that story, you can then move forward and ask that ancestor if it is okay if they release this trauma. 
if they release this belief system. And if they are open to it, you can ask them to come forward. And notice that there is a book sitting on a pedestal just in front of you. And that is the signature of all of the people that you've ever come across on your soul's journey. And you're going to ask your ancestor to sign the book, releasing them as well as all of the ancestral lines moving forward, however many generations it is. Allowing yourself to release all of that energy and allowing the ancestor to sign the book, releasing all of that energy from their energetic field, moving forward through all the generations. And then you can ask them if there is anything else that needs to be cleared. And then you can also ask if it is something that you can clear on your own, or if you may need assistance. From here, we would like to ask our angels if there's anything else that needs to be done in order to clear what we have just cleared for this particular ancestral line. And then we're going to thank our ancestors for being with us today. We're going to thank our angels and guides for being with us, offering up that divine light protection while we do this work. And we are going to thank our higher selves and our soul for signing on to do this work. This beautiful work that helps all of humanity and all of society. And I would like you to imagine that that beautiful book holding all of those signatures is closed now. And any residual energy from this clearing is now dissipating and transmuting into light. I would like you to imagine that you are exiting this beautiful sacred space and you are entering into that beautiful clearing with the grass and flowers and the circle of trees. And I would like you to take a deep breath and on the exhale, imagine everything that you cleared today is coming out in the exhale. So inhale and exhale. As an extra added bonus, imagine that beautiful divine source energy at your soul star chakra about six feet above your head. And imagine that beautiful divine light raining down through your crown. And allowing that beautiful light to permeate every cell of your body, clearing and cleansing as it moves down. Imagine it going down your face, the back of your head, the nape of your neck, your throat, shoulders, down to your elbows, to the ends of your fingertips, to your heart, your lungs, all of your internal organs, all the way down to your waist, to your hips, Your thighs, your knees, your ankles, all the way to the tips of your toes. 
clearing and cleansing as it goes down the entirety of your body. And when you are ready, you can open your eyes. Whether you live in France or whether you're just trying to learn French, sometimes navigating the nuance of the vocabulary can be daunting. Navigating the French is a podcast that explores each one of these nuances that will help you integrate the language into your everyday vocabulary and help you understand the history of that word or concept. Emily Monaco is a delight to listen to. So head over to Paris Underground Radio, navigating the French. We will be right back with the heart of you after a word from our sponsors. Welcome back to the heart of you on Paris Underground Radio. Thank you so much for joining me for this beautiful divine cleansing of the ancestral line and for doing this meditation. You can always come back to this meditation as many times as you need to. You may get more messages each time you do it. If you are having some blockages or if you're having some trouble figuring out what it is that you need to clear in your ancestral line, please do not hesitate to contact me. You can reach me through my website at infinitesoullove.com. You can also reach me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube at Infinite Soul Love 1111. Thank you so much for listening this season. It's been an incredible season three. I'm very much looking forward to seeing all of you in season four. Thanks so much and bye for now. This episode of The Heart of You was produced by Jennifer Garrity for Paris Underground Radio. For more great content, please join us on Patreon.